so without further ado, Gavin Andreessen, Chief Scientist of the Coin Foundation. Cool, yeah, so ask me questions. How do we scale Bitcoin? Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? Not yet. Hi, my name is Andy. Just had a question how would the scalability run not going? Oh, I, I wrote two blog posts about scalability, and I think it's looking really good. Um, I'm actually doing some experiments right, well, I would be writing code right now if I was in Massachusetts, um, to actually figure out how well uh, the current core code scales, and I actually have some preliminary results, and it's looking pretty good. So I think we can increase the block size and get up to like PayPal scale, uh, transaction volume with like no effort. And then scaling beyond that, you know, again, read those two blog posts where there's kind of a short term bunch of stuff that's kind of work in progress that we need to do. And then longer term kind of architectural stuff that I think uh, we can also do um, you know, as we need to do it, right? And we want, we want transaction volumes that are at an all time high, which is fantastic. Um, but we're still like orders of magnitude away from, I think, where we'd all like to see Bitcoin transactions going. Who else? I'll let, I'll let the mic runner pick. <laughs> um, hey, so on the topic of scalability, uh, are you familiar with the ultimate blockchain uh, compression algorithm for unspent transaction outputs? It was fairly a big topic on the Bitcoin talk forums. Uh, ultimate blockchain compression. Is this uh, uh, Mark's post? So it would, uh, it was started by E to the I pi. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. User, yeah. And what it allows for is for, I, I believe it allows for full security thin clients. So yeah. it's like SPD. UTXO commitments. commitments. Oh, oh, UTXO commitments. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I keep asking, like, is there consensus on how to get UTXO commitments? No. And I keep being told <laughs> no. <laughs> so figure it out. <laughs> there needs to be a solution uh, for that. And, and, you know, it's, it's, I'm not king of Bitcoin, so if somebody has a cool idea, it's your job to make to convince like the whole world that it's a cool <laughs> idea and it should happen. And then like my my one of my roles is to kind of bless consensus, right? And even I I don't even like that role, right? I would much rather consensus just emerge and everybody says, Gavin, you're being an idiot if you don't support this. Um, so th you know, that's what I think about uh, ultimate blockchain compression. Okay, thank you. It's not a technical question, but do you take Cody Wilson seriously when he says he's going to try to get on the board and destroy the foundation? Uh, sure. I mean, you know, the structure of the foundation board is such that he can't do that alone. <laughs> so, you know, he would be the one, I think, person on the foundation board that tries to vote everything down um, if he can get elected, which uh, foundation elections will be coming up uh, very soon. I don't think I'm allowed to say exactly when yet. We had a Bitcoin Foundation board meeting this morning where uh, we talked about the, found the schedule for elections. So um, that'll happen soon. Um, and that'll be announced very soon, exactly what the schedule is. Um, and we'll see. I, 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 I doubt he will be elected. But if he does, then he'll be one voice on the Foundation board. <laughs> Hi, Gavin. Th thank you for being here. Well, you're well, you can blame my wife. She's actually at a geology conference over in Moscow. <laughs> 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 uh, could, could we go there after to learn about the geology? You c well, I, I don't know what time they shut down. They're geologists. They love drinking beer, so they're probably all in the bars <laughs> by now. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, what is it like to have received the... Um, whatever, from Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and it was really not my intention to end up in this position where I'm talking to lots of people and, and seen as kind of de facto leader of this Bitcoin effort. Um, but life is funny sometimes, and so here we are. <laughs> 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 
Hi, Ian. Thanks for all your, your hard work and kind of level-headedness. Um, what do you think about people using the blockchain for data other than payments? Personally, I think that that's fine. I think that the, that the blockchain should be seen as a common kind of good and that we'll use the transaction fee mechanism to decide kind of what's the, the most useful use of the blockchain. Um, I don't think, uh, from like the, the technical geek in me, thinks that if you want to like store lots of data on the blockchain, you're an idiot. Um, don't do that. There are much better ways of, of storing data. You know, store a hash there and have some way of you know, commit to hashes. That's a perfect use for this distributed global ledger that we have. And then store the data in some other way. There are plenty of great ways of storing lots of data that's really efficient. And really what the blockchain gives you is this global public ledger that's a nice ordered list of this happened before this. Um, and that's the way I think of it. Um, but again, you know, who am I to say what you should use the blockchain for? So, you know, from, from my personal opinion, you know, we should just try to design things so that the uses that make sense is, is what ends up on the blockchain. Thank you. Hi, I'm Zach. I work at this space here. It's really awesome. Um, so I have a question, it's all theoretical. Uh, would it be smart for the U.S. Treasury to create its own cryptocurrency? Um, um, if I was the U.S. Treasury, would I want to create my own cryptocurrency? Um, or like they're the issuer, they're a central issuer? Yeah, I think it would be smart. Um, I don't think you would necessarily have a blockchain. You don't really need it if, like, you're the U.S. Treasury. You can just decide, you know, what the order of transactions is. Um, and essentially, they have it, right? I mean, they, they have systems for keeping track of electronic payments. Um, it's just this messy system that takes days for transactions to clear. Um, so, you know, if I was chief technology officer at the U.S. Treasury, I don't know, I'd think hard about, you know, can we transition from this weird legacy system we have that used to be all paper and people into something a little more modern. Um, and there's probably, there is somebody at the Treasury thinking about that, and I just don't know who they are. Does that answer your question, or did I just sidestep it? Uh, <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on sidechains? I think sidechains are really interesting. Um, uh, I like the idea of using the the Bitcoin, the token of value, to kind of as a fuel to fuel other use cases. I think that makes a lot of sense. There's no reason to invent a new token of value if you don't have to. But the only reason Bitcoin doesn't use dollars as kind of the thing that fuels the Bitcoin network is because. You, you you can't get them in there, right? There's no electronic dollar that you could kind of tie to a Bitcoin transaction to pay Bitcoin transaction fees. So the, 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 the token of value had to come first to make the whole network work so that we have a way of rewarding miners for doing the work of validating transactions so they have a way of paying transaction fees. Um, but I think sidechains are a really interesting <coughs> idea uh, to give room to experiment with a whole bunch of other different uses Again, using kind of bitcoins as the, I think of bitcoins as kind of, the, the analogy I used with a reporter was, I think of like bitcoins like diesel fuel, right? If you think about diesel fuel, I actually use it to heat my house, right? You can use it to, uh, for a truck. Uh, you can use it in a car if you have a car that takes diesel. Right? Those are three different, very different use cases of the same fuel. And I, and I kind of see bitcoin and sidechains as the same thing. Right, sidechains will now will enable people to to come up with like you know the diesel truck uh, blockchain and the home heating oil blockchain that have completely different use cases but are still uh, using Bitcoin. Uh, two part question or two two questions. Um, in your in your quest to be dethroned as the king of Bitcoin. 
Um, what are like three areas of technical topics that you feel that people, innovators, should be focusing on or learning about? And the second one is like late game Bitcoin when Coinbase rewards are you know, diminished as, as they are set to be. How do you see that kind of changing the landscape when these are you know, the primary uh, incentive for people to work? Um, <coughs> two-part questions, because I always forget the second part <laughs> time I answer the first part, or, or vice versa. Um, so, I tend to think about kind of what are going to be problems a year or two years from now, which is why I've been thinking a lot about scalability, because I really hope that we have a big problem with scalability mm -hmm. a year or two years from now. Um, uh, I mean, for people who are just like learning, I mean, there's there's such a big learning curve. It's it's tough to go up, uh, right? There's a lot of there's a lot to, to to understand with Bitcoin. I think I think kind of understanding how consensus works with Bitcoin and the notion of you know how transactions are confirmed and the fact that transactions can get unconfirmed if there's a block reorg. I think that's something re that's really important for people in to internalize. I think we've seen a lot of lost Bitcoin because people haven't properly like understood <coughs> that and have uh, you know been very sad when they assumed that a Bitcoin with a confirmation or two is you know always going to be a hundred percent. Like broad topics, like let's say, do you think people should be working on privacy more than stuff or multi-sig or you know that kind of. I think right now, like ease of use mm -hmm. and security are still the two big <coughs> issues that are getting worked through. Um, so, and absolutely, you know, multi-sig and uh, just making that easier to use. Um, I think the next step in all of that will be to <coughs> kind of have people come together and decide on some uh, standards <coughs> for. Kind of, I want to set up a multi-sig wallet using three different companies, let's have some standards so that you know that can happen in a way that's really easy to use. So I think that's going to be the next step. So uh, long, long ago, uh, during April of this year, the Bitcoin Foundation released a risk management study. I was curious if that's an ongoing discussion within the foundation, if there's plans to release an updated version of that. Well, Jim Harper, who did that risk management study, um, is no longer employed by the foundation. Um, although he, he, he has said he's going to be running for a seat on the board of the, of the foundation. Um, the foundation just did a, a big pivot um, to focus less on policy, or really not focus at all on policy, to let other organizations that have sprung up tackle that, and to really focus on kind of core development and making sure that the network keeps on running. So core development and standardization, yeah, here's some clapping, good, <laughs> um, is really the focus. And I think that risk management study, uh, maybe eventually it'll get, get updated, but, but um, probably not anytime soon, partly because Jim's no longer working at the foundation and also because kind of the risks of core development aren't like I think the number one risk in that risk management study was uh, banking relationships being a problem for Bitcoin companies. Yep. <laughs> Which, you know, yeah. <laughs> that turned out that that's absolutely true. Um, but that's not something that the foundation is going to tackle, frankly, anytime soon. So there was that and Satoshi came back and said he didn't like the project anymore. I didn't remember that one. Yeah, uh, another big one on there. <laughs> not very likely. Well, we still have time. That could still happen. Yeah. <laughs> So going through the Bitcoin Development Digest, I think for a lot of people on the outside with very little technical knowledge, it can be a bit like reading Hegel, and that you almost need a dictionary of the evolution of philosophy to understand the book. So I'm wondering, is there a way to synthesize this technical semantic with something that a mass audience can easily digest, understand, and then advocate for? I, I, whenever I'm asked that kind of question, I always look for role models. So if you have any ideas of like another <laughs> highly technical, like 
space where there is some nice digestion process where it's explained well to the public. Um, cool, you know, we should do that. Um, but off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything. I mean, most, I, I like to say, if Bitcoin is successful, it will eventually be as boring as, you know, cellular telephone technology. So I don't know if you know how your cell phone works. I have a vague notion of how my cell phone works, like how radio waves travel through walls to cell towers and then <laughs> something happens at the cell tower and it like goes to another cell tower and goes to another person, right? But I don't know the nuts and bolts. And like really on the Bitcoin development mailing list, we're talking about, you know, microwave transmitters talking between points and all this stuff that I think most people really don't care about and don't have to care about. You would mentioned the answer to the last questions about standards around multi-sig. Do you see with the foundation sort of refocusing on core dev as establishing standards or working with maybe existing organizations like the IEEE uh, to work with technology standards around Bitcoin? Is that something you're going to be, the foundation, be focusing on? Yeah, the foundation is actually behind the scenes right now talking to lots of companies. I know there's some companies in this room we've contacted to try to, uh, we have a straw man for kind of putting up a, a, a new standards organization to try to make the standardization process more transparent and more participatory and try to come up with something that, that everybody's happy with and that everybody's bought into. Um, that, whenever you do something like that, you can't just, you don't want to like, you know, create a hundred page document and then say, this is the way it's going to be, everybody, woohoo! Um, so th we're not doing that. We're, we, you know, it's an iterative process where we kind of talk to, uh, we talk to the core developers and see if all the core developers think that it's a good idea. Now we've talked to a dozen companies and see if those dozen companies think it's a good idea. And then we'll talk to, you know, a hundred companies and see if they think it's a good idea. And then, you know, go completely public and open it up and say, you know, there's broad consensus that this is the direction to go. Um, and so if you're interested in that, I'm going to regret this, uh, send me email and I can, I can kind of put you on the list of all the people who are going to be reviewing this and, and having input into how do we do this in a way that, that works for everybody. Uh, uh, so uh, I just wonder if you have any thoughts on cooperation amongst miners and if that would be a bad thing, if that's a good thing. Uh, you know, what does that mean for consensus? It depends on what they cooperate on. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, cooperation and like sharing software and like being open about what their transaction selection policy is. And I think there's lots of places where they could cooperate in a really good way. Um, I, I don't think that they have any motivation to cooperate in a bad way. But that's always the, 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 the worry, right? That they form a cartel and do something evil. Well, yeah, and, and maybe you can talk about what would be good and bad in this context. Um, well, you know, bad would be, you know, we're not going to accept any transactions that begin with the letters uh, <laughs> that, that, you know, involve public key addresses that begin 1 1 because 11 is Gavin's favorite number and we don't like Gavin anymore. So <laughs> no 11s. <laughs> in Bitcoin transactions, um, which is a cont completely contrived example, but you know, like censoring transactions, I think would be a bad thing. Um, you're cooperating to say we want an eleven dollar Bitcoin transaction fee on every transaction because eleven is Gavin's favorite number, and you know, eleven dollars per transaction would be really good for us. Uh, you know, that would be a bad form of, of cooperation. Um, but you know. I tend not to worry too much about that because, you know, even if they tried to be evil, as long as there's no barrier to entry, some other, you know, interested group would probably come along and uh, just, you know, start creating blocks and, and breaking their cartel. So right now, I believe the expected confirmation time for transactions around 10 minutes. Do you foresee 
this going down to something comparable to say the debit transaction and such? Uh, that's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, the security of zero confirmation transactions, you know, before a transaction actually gets into a block, I think could be made pretty high. I, th I think we could get good, um, I'm really excited about the idea of, of, actually this is one area where I think miners could cooperate, the idea of miners uh, publishing near-miss blocks, so giving the whole network an idea of, you know, this, this is the block that I'm working on. Um, I think that could be good for miners if they pre-announce their blocks, because then if they actually do find a block, they could just transmit the, the nonce and the Coinbase, and like that's all the transaction the network would need to see, assuming that they had already seen the block that the miner was working on. And if those kind of pre-announced blocks have some proof of work attached to them, not the full proof of work that you needed for solving a block, but then you could get to a place where everybody kind of sees, you know, I've transmitted this, I, I've, this transaction is kind of on the network, and you know, 85% of hashing power is actually working on a block that will include that transaction, and no hashing power is working on a, a double spend of that transaction, you can be pretty confident that that's the transaction that's going to get into the next block. So I think you can get, yes? Oh, I heard a couple of companies are working on this problem, as you described. Cool, good. I'm glad that companies are working on it. So I think that will be the way to go to get you know, very quick, uh, pretty darn high confidence, uh, zero confirmation transactions. I think, you know, like buying a Lamborghini with Bitcoin, I think you're always going to have to wait a couple blocks um, uh, before the car dealer is going to hand over the keys, maybe. Well, I don't know, maybe if you buy a Lamborghini and they take your driver's license and they know where you live, and you know, they'll let you drive it off a lot anyway. I've never bought one. <laughs> One more okay. First of all, please thank your wife for making you come out here. <laughs> um, more importantly, uh, unfortunately returning to Bitcoin Foundation, um, quick question. Because of the recent pivot um, to core development by the foundation, has there been any internal discussion about having a permanent position on the board since you're stepping down for a core developer to ensure that one of the people that are actually maintaining the integrity of the code it has a voice at the foundation. There hasn't been. Um, now, when I say core developer, I, I mean like one of the five people who have push access to the GitHub repo. I don't think you'd want to limit the pool of people who can like serve on the foundation board to like one of those five people. Right. Um, there have in the past been discussions about having an appointed position on the foundation board, where the where. The, the other foundation board members just find somebody really cool who they think would be great to serve on the foundation board, like Al Gore or you know, <laughs> 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 somebody, you know. um, and then be able to like appoint them as a, uh, um, and so maybe that would make sense that you know the foundation might decide to hire and develop the type to sit on the board, um, but you know. Right now, the focus is on the next election, and uh, uh, there haven't been recent discussions about that. Okay. Al Gore does like the blockchain, though. <laughs> <laughs> Al would be great. <laughs> and that was the last question I heard. Yeah, so thanks so much, Gavin. We really appreciate you coming.